Welcome back to Garage Time, where I share tips and tricks on how to rest a mod a junked Porsche 911. This week, I'm going to continue sort of chipping away at that welding to-do list. So, let's get right to it. Garage Time. I just got back from the eye doctor, and my eyes are completely dilated. Maybe it's not the best day to be doing welding and I actually can't see that well at the moment, but I'm going to uh, be doing some cutting and planning and then hopefully my eyes will be better later in the day so I can get some work done. Good news is I can still see, but uh, I will need glasses for nighttime driving. Oh well. Last week I made this template for a B-pillar gusset. And this is not for looks. This is really to increase the stiffness of the whole car. So the chassis is tied to the roll bar, the solid roof, all this is gonna make this chassis stiffer. Here's what the opening looks like between the B pillar and the roll bar. And what I've been debating, or did last week at least, is should I make the template so it's kind of tangent with the bar? So it comes out here to meet the bar? Or do I use an even smaller gusset and try to keep it so it's kind of perpendicular to the bar? So what I'll probably end up doing is a little bit of both. I'm gonna also involve a twist because at the top, the B pillar is behind the roll bar. And then at the bottom, the B pillar is forward of the roll bar. Just retaped it in. I'm trying to highlight the twist. So if you see how it fits on the top, versus how it fits on the bottom. It's got, a, it's got a twist to it. I'm using 14 gauge metal for this. Because this is heavy uh, gauge or pretty thick, I'm gonna use my plasma cutter to cut this out. I'm wearing my uh, welding helmet here so I don't hurt my eyes. Can't really see that well. I'm gonna be ambitious and cut out the other side too. This is quite a bit oversized. I'm just gonna clean up the edges with my bench grinder. Okay, this piece has been roughed out. You can see it does have a slight twist in it. So now it's just an iterative process of using my hand grinder to get these profiles to made up exactly where they can be welded in place. But I don't think I need the seat anymore, so I'm gonna take that out before I put holes in it. It's hard to hold it with just tape alone, but this is trimmed now to fit its best kind of average fit. Some of those gaps will go away when I force it into position and you know weld it in. But I'm gonna start laying out the holes, speed holes, and see how that looks. Another important thing to consider is this is the factory seatbelt hole, and it cannot be obscured because I am gonna run the factory belts too. So I don't wanna put a speed hole right here, for instance, because there's a D ring here that needs to clear. I'm just trying to figure out the hole spacing that I wanna punch in these gussets. I'm gonna use the same dimple die that I used for the strut tower braces. That's what these look like. This spacing here is about, I think it's an inch and, a, inch and an eighth. I got one, two, three, four, five, six holes here. I could potentially do more holes in this, but I'm thinking about increasing the spacing just a little bit because it's a longer part. This S represents the seatbelt attachment point, so I need to avoid that. So if I did every two inches, let's see what that would look like. 
that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six holes again, but further spaced out. Also, if you guys aren't aware, these are available for purchase. Um, 80 bucks, you can find them on eBay. This is the front strut tower brace with the additional tabs on the bottom. That allows you to create an X design for higher torsional rigidity. Okay, I'm just working down here on the floor because I don't feel like lifting this up on the bench. But this press brake uh, works with these dies. They just, you know, this goes right through the hole. This has a dimple on the other side. I, these, these dies are homemade. I made them at that workshop. So just open it up and squeeze it. I almost did that backwards. So the S is where the seatbelt hole is and I want the dimples to go this way. So I need to change directions. Good thing I caught that. Okay, it, it definitely dimpled uh, like the die always does, but because there's no flanges on this thing and the dimple is so close to the edge, it actually pulled the metal in and created, you know, a smile out of this. I'm gonna have to go back to the table and just hammer this thing flat again, re-put the twist back in it. I probably could have put the holes in first. If I had a template that I knew worked and I knew the hole positions, I could have put the holes in prior to cutting it out. That would have avoided a bunch of distortion, but I think I can just salvage this by some hammer and dolly on it. The speed holes are for appearance, but it does provide extra rigidity. So now I need to take it back to the car and then re-add the twist. Okay guys, let me know what you think. If I squeeze it in there, all the gaps go to about zero, which is perfect for welding. So you can see it's, it just needs to be pushed and welded. Okay, I've trimmed the other side and marked or copied the holes from this part to the passenger side. It's too early to weld it in right now. One, because I need to check the seat belt fit. And two, I'm not finished working on the rear of the car. So the last thing I want to do is weld the roll bar in. That's after I've had a chance to clean and prep for paint and, and, and make it easier on myself. So even though it's tempting to just you know, burn these in. I don't want to do it too soon, but it is helpful to have them made and, uh, you know, cross it off the list. And I mentioned the seat belts before, and I just installed them. These are the factory seat belts, and this is that D-ring I was talking about. It has full mobility, and then lower, this recoil piece, it does clear the roll bar. These factory seat belts just came in the mail, just in the nick of time. I'll take it. I got lucky again. While I'm feeling lucky, I should really tackle this uh, problem area right here. So these camber boxes were added for some more suspension adjustability, and I'm really glad they're here, but I can't have this hole here either. That was all cut so I can get the welding done from the top side. Now the issue is filling up the hole, but another issue is you can barely see the trailing arm right here. It is almost contacting the seat pan, and I haven't even moved it up to the highest hole yet. I'll only be able to use the highest hole if I change the outer pivot points as well, which is something that's a bolt-on modification later. But in order to make this system work as it's designed, I need to clearance a little bit more back here because the trailing arm goes directly underneath this circle piece. And I want to have full adjustability and I don't want this bashing into the car the minute I hit a bump. So a little more cutting is required here. So I really need to fill up all this area so there's no air exchange coming from the engine compartment into the cabin. All right, I peeled up that little tab there so I can see the trailing arm just below it. 
So now I need to come up with a strategy on, you know, preventing that trailing arm from contacting the seat pans. Here's the game plan. I have this piece fit around the camber box and I'm gonna clean it up and just tack weld it in a few places. That's gonna solve this hole. And then for the clearancing on the trailing arm, which is directly beneath this little flap here, I am going to cut all the way across the top of this blue line and then across the inside of this blue line here and make a plate that welds onto the camber box is like a shelf all the way across here and then forms down along this edge here. It'll form down on this edge. So it'll come here, down, and then I'll have a corner right here. So it'll be a shelf with a corner. This piece is now secured in really well. I got several tacks all the way around the perimeter, so it's as far as I can take it right now. Um, I need to get to the back side to hammer this one a little bit. This shrunk so much that this is now overlapping, which it didn't used to do that. So I need to stretch this weld right here so that this can all get back into position, close up that gap. So now I'm gonna switch my attention to cutting along these blue lines and really opening up a whole new hole, even bigger than the original one just so that these trailing arms aren't gonna bounce into it. It's likely that other parts are gonna interfere before the trailing arm would get this high, but I'm not taking any second chances. Uh, I don't have the transaxle in. I'm not gonna be adding it in just to do some measurements with the drive shafts, half shafts, trying to measure where those are. I'm just going to make the clearance here and never have to worry about it again. Okay, here's the concept that I want to try to pull off. I think this is easier than trying to make a, a, a mound around this mouth here. So just kind of continuing this camber box all the way into the seat pan and allowing clearance for the trailing arm and only doing it in one bend. To me, this is kind of the best of both worlds. I'm not giving up any interior space. I still have a problem here with this bolt hole. I don't know if you can see if I push down, that's the very top of the hole right there. And if I wanna use this hole, I'm gonna have a real difficult time getting that bolt in place. So what I'll do once all this gets welded in is I'll come back with the saw and I'll cut a little rectangle here. And then I'll have a uh, cylinder, half cylinder go over the top of that. So that bolt has a little place to get, to get out and get in. This is the uh, strengthening bar. This is just a mock-up bar. I'm gonna use something a little bit bigger, probably one inch diameter uh, DOM tubing, and it does terminate up here against the shock turrets. So this is another method of tying in the suspension to the cage. If you like speed holes, don't forget these strut tower braces are available for the front, and you can find them on eBay or just send me an email and I'll uh, make sure you get a pair. They're $80. Also, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Our Garage Time. If you want to support Our Garage Time and all these videos, check out Patreon. It helps a lot. Appreciate it, guys. Next week, we'll continue getting this uh, rear seat area done and hopefully get it prepped for paint. Fingers crossed. Take care, guys.